Hello, it's Crad here with the ultimate guide on boosters for Armored Core 6. Boosters, like the generators, is yet another piece that is difficult to pick but greatly affects your gameplay. In fact, boosters are debatably even more confusing. So here we go because we have a lot to cover. First, let's take a look at the stats. Do not skip this section and just jump to the boosters or you will have no idea what I'm talking about when I'm discussing the boosters. Before I get deep into the stats, it is worth noting that the tank legs have their own built-in booster, and their stats don't seem to translate one-to-one -one with the equipable boosters. For example, the thrust doesn't translate to the same numbers as the movement speed you get from regular boosters because of other stats on the legs like high speed performance. I will discuss the tank legs separately during my legs breakdown. With that out of the way, let's first take a look at the basic stats of the boosters. First, we have thrust. This is essentially how much basic movement speed your AC will get with the booster. This is translated into the boost speed on the right side of the expanded stat screen. This boost speed is what you care about because it is a combination of your thrust and the weight of your AC. In combat, you see the speedometer on the very left side of your screen. Your top grounded move speed corresponds to this boost speed. The speedometer doesn't work that well in the air, because it also adds how fast you're ascending or falling to the speed, so the changes are three-dimensional, thus more erratic. Now, many thanks to Cassus and Drifty for graphing the data out. From this graph, you can see the clear relationship between your booster speed and AC weight. The red line is graphed using the Lulas, and the blue line is graphed with the BST G2 PO4. If you use an image of the same length, like this arrow on my screen, to measure the distance between the graphs, you will probably notice that the lines are getting closer to each other. However, higher or lower thrust is straight up a proportional increase or decrease. 400 divided by 360 is 11.1%, and so is 280 divided by 252. This tells us that increasing or decreasing thrust increases or decreases your speed by a set amount proportionally. Regardless of your weight, switching boosters will always make you that much faster or slower. This is the first conclusion. The second one is about the relationship of the weight versus the AC speed. First, your AC speed does not go any faster after you drop below 40k weight. While going under 50k weight does make you significantly faster, your AC is also paper thin, and you don't really get much out of the effect by hovering around 49k weight. You can do it, but it's not very advisable on the defensive side, especially with stability being a thing. Getting caught a single time can spell your death. Besides, do remember that speed in and of itself does not force the enemy targeting system to stop tracking you. There is no such thing as outrunning target tracking, but you can indeed make the target tracking slower when retargeting you after you quick boost by being faster. While I believe your AC's base movement speed and therefore thrust is a very important stat on your booster, you need to be able to make use of the speed to do something like make sure you're able to stick close to your enemy or better kite and reposition your AC. Therefore, the most ideal weight bracket to stick to, even if you want to be fast, is the 50k to 75k weight bracket for lightweight builds. For this bracket, your overall speed doesn't drop by much. This is why, in general, something closer to mid-weight, like 70k to 75k overall weight, is quite a bit stronger then say, going for a full lightweight build at 50k weight. The speed decrease you are going to experience over this interval is roughly 6%, but you can easily trade that for 25% to even 35% tankiness. Going past 75k puts you into quite a steep drop, which then evens out after 80k once again. As a personal optimization tip from me, feel free to ignore it if you want. I see a pattern where I often avoid the 80k to 90k range, 
if my AC is forced to go over 80k weight, I often choose pieces that can make me even tankier and make sure my AC has the ability to respond to the opponent despite being slow. If you're above 80k weight, trading 3% move speed for 10% tankiness and extra stability I feel is quite worth it. Because if you can't kill fast opponents, it won't be because of your speed. It will be because your AC combination doesn't have weapons that deal with fast opponents. Instead, being tankier can win you the tank matchup versus someone else also slow. In terms of how boost speed translates to movement speed though, for each point of booster speed, your AC seems to move at roughly 0.283 meters per second. So something like 250 booster speed translates to roughly 71 meters per second and 350 booster speed translates to 99 meters per second, assuming you're keeping your top speed. Alright, phew, that was just the thrust. Thankfully, upward thrust and upward energy consumption are easy to understand. Upward thrust is how fast you ascend. The lower your upward energy consumption is, the less energy you consume while flying upwards. An implication of lower upward consumption is therefore more air time since you spend less energy in the air. The next section of the booster stats is all related to quick boosts. Your quick boost thrust is the power of your quick boost, which translates to the quick boost speed on the right side of the stat screen. It is possible to get a quick boost speed lower than your boost speed. On the ground, you will still feel faster because of the jump power of your legs, but in the air, your overall speed will indeed decrease when using quick boosts while going towards the same direction. As for the quick boost jet duration, this is how long the quick boost lasts. The longer it lasts, the further you travel too, as both speed and duration contributes to the distance of the quick boost. Next, the lower your quick boost energy consumption is, the less energy it costs for you to perform a quick boost. This is translated directly to a number on the right side of your expanded stat screen. The reason why the numbers are different at the moment is because the booster efficiency adjustment on your core alters this value as well. If your base energy consumption is 700 and your booster efficiency is 110, you will use 10% less energy per quick boost. This would result in 630 energy instead. On the other hand, if it is lower than 100, you take the corresponding penalty as more energy spent per quick boost. Note, because of rounding due to decimals we don't see, this energy cost can be off by one point when you do the math. The quick boost energy consumption on the right side of the stat screen corresponds exactly to the amount of energy you spend per quick boost. Assuming you have 4,400 energy capacity from your generator and each quick boost costs 700 energy, you can quick boost 7 times in a row, assuming you don't regenerate any energy in between. Next, we have quick boost reload time and quick boost reload ideal weight. Both of these affect your quick boost reload time. The base quick boost reload time is directly stated. If your total weight is above the ideal weight, the quick boost reload time is further increased. Also, the penalty applied by ideal weight is only a tad bit if you go over by a few thousand weight. It then ramps up and lowers again, sort of like a bell curve. Not precisely, but close enough to give you an idea. However, the ideal weight is not a hard cap and the optimal booster choice can often require you to go over the ideal weight. In fact, going over is not always a bad thing. I have shown with my Silver Haze build one way you can purposely increase your weight to make a slower quick boost stronger than a faster one. But going way over the ideal weight is indeed not recommended as it kills your quick boost reload time. Assault Boost Thrust and Energy Consumption is exactly what you think they are. It's the speed and energy consumption used for your assault boost. And the melee attack thrust is the speed of your melee attacks that dash at your opponent and how much energy you spend when doing this dash. Not all melee weapons have the dash though, 
so it isn't always relevant just because you're using a melee weapon. Finally, we have the weight and energy load, which is a common cost typical to the other pieces of your AC. These stats do matter, but they don't matter nearly as much as picking the right booster. So unless the two boosters you're debating between don't matter much in performance or have a very different cost, I suggest you to drop cost from elsewhere in your kit, like your frame pieces, as boosters matter more. Alright, now onto the actual boosters themselves. Since we discussed thrust first, let's start off with the BST G2 P06 SPD. As the name already implies with the speed portion, this is the fastest booster in game, in terms of thrust. It also has above average assault boost and melee speed. What it pays to be this quick is its quick boost speed, which is actually slower than your boost speed. While grounded, quick boosting still makes you faster than just moving because of your legs jump stats, which gives you more distance covered. However, while airborne, you actually get less distance covered per second if you use the quick boost, since the speed is decreased. This is a very important implication that I think many people don't think about. Because your boost speed is slower, your distance covered is less than simply moving in the air. So if the enemy has a fast projectile already fired, like a charged rifle shot or a laser cannon, make sure to dodge to the opposite direction of where you're going. Because if you dodge towards the same direction, you're not getting more than the predicted range of the enemy's target tracking and will get hit. The other problem is, despite its relatively low quick boost reload time, this booster has the second highest energy consumption for boosting, so it isn't great for extended aerial combat. Therefore, this booster is specialized for grounded combat and doesn't perform as well in the air since it only has average upward thrust and upward energy consumption too. My suggestion if you're going to run these boosters is to have anti-air ability with something longer ranged. Otherwise, you will feel yourself losing to builds that can last longer in the air. But its stats also means that it is available for all weight because the main selling point is your base move speed. Your quick boosts should be more reactive anyway so you wouldn't be spamming your quick boost too much. Thus, longer quick boost reload time is not too detrimental, so feel free to use this booster above its ideal weight. Following the idea of specializing on the ground, we have the Alula booster. This booster is fast, but high on energy consumption. The reason why it's not great for aerial combat is because of its weak upward thrust and high upward energy consumption. This is definitely a strong and popular pick for lightweight builds because another one of the Alula booster's strong points is having the second fastest quick boost reload time that's good for closing distances. Its stat distribution is very tailored for going fast, so even for builds that go above its ideal weight, I would still consider this booster. The cutoff is roughly around 72 to 73k weight for me because after that, you might as well use the speed booster if grounded combat is your main concern. The gills have the absolute worst stats when it comes to melee potential. Do not run these with melee weapons that dash because you will feel like a fish out of water. Its selling point is its low quick boost reload time, but it doesn't have a high quick boost thrust nor quick boost jet duration, so your quick boosts don't travel far. Even if we factor in the lower energy consumption per quick boost, I would say that the Alulas are still about the same if not better at approaching enemies with your boosts. Since the gills aren't better offensively, is it better defensively? I'm going to be honest with you, 0.3 seconds is very short, and you're more likely to be wasting your energy than throwing your enemy's FCS off track. A dodge once per 0.4 seconds or so, is plenty if you understand target tracking. I suggest people to go over its quick boost ideal weight to around 74 to 75k weight in order to slightly slow down your quick boost while making the full use out of the weight breakpoints to give yourself more bulk. Ironically, you will likely see an increase in performance with these boosters 
by making sure you can't quick boost as often. Then, why should we run this booster over the Lula? The actual selling point of this booster over the Lulas is its vertical thrust and energy consumption. So, if you run a close range focus setup that doesn't use melee weapons, like maybe Zuo Ludlows for example, you can consider the gills, as they have better capabilities while in the air. And you also don't need to approach your enemy nearly as close as melee weapons do. Next, the Gridwalker is the booster with the highest upward thrust and an average upward energy consumption. This makes the Gridwalker the best booster for ascending. You might not realize it on a cursory glance, but upward thrust is a stat that is very skewed. The average is 4962, and this number is heavily carried by the top two boosters in this category. So plenty of upward speed is relatively similar across the other boosters. There isn't as many fast ascending boosters as there are high thrust boosters, which makes the Gridwalker a rare breed. Talking about speed, it's not as if the Gridwalkers are slow. They come in fourth in thrust. Since the Gridwalker is also equipped with the second highest melee attack thrust in game, this is a very offensive oriented booster suited to rush down your enemies, both grounded and in the air with a light setup. These boosters are offensively oriented because its quick boost stats are below average, so you will have a hard time using these boosters to dodge efficiently with its long quick boost reload time. It also has the lowest ideal weight out of all the boosters, but you can cleverly utilize its low ideal weight defensively by going over on purpose like I've shown in my Silver Haze build, where I turned the Gridwalker's disadvantages into advantages. Although, due to the way ideal weight works, having too heavy of a weight does still kill the booster's reload time. I don't suggest this booster for builds above 80k weight. The Mule is a booster that everyone seems to get wrong at what it actually does well with because of its efficient upward energy consumption. You're going to say, Krite, don't you run these with like tetrapods to stay up in the air as long as possible? The answer is, you don't. These things actually suck with tetrapods. Why? Because tetrapods hover energy cost isn't reduced by these boosters. Unfortunately, upward energy consumption only applies when you ascend, and not when you hover. This is why you can see the energy depletes at the same speed for the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 boosters, which has double the upward energy consumption of the mule. The tetrapod's energy cost is constant, regardless of your booster choice, so you might as well choose a faster booster or one with better quick boost speed, since you're likely to use coral generators for the permanent float anyway. Something with higher upward thrust will get you back into position quicker too. The mule is a better choice for non-tetrapods, as these can effectively turn the other leg types into tetrapods with their slow but energy efficient ascension speed. Combine them with reverse joints and you can skip the initial slow phase of ascension by having a powerful vertical jump. Then, you can keep floating with your efficient energy consumption. You can do some fun stuff with this booster, like using firing stance on weapons, or having a high enough energy supply efficiency to keep floating for forever. However, your payment with the slow speed on all fronts just cripples these boosters outside niche long-range PvE hover builds. The NGI-001 is my personal favorite booster. It's a bit like a heavier version of the Lula, as all its speed stats are relatively high, with the second highest upward thrust after the grid walkers. It is also the only other high thrust booster where its quick boost thrust is also high enough to see a much quicker speed like the Lula. In fact, thanks to having the highest quick boost thrust, the NGI-001 is great at using its quick boost to dodge. This booster is more defensively oriented as its reload time is on the higher side, and it also has the most expensive quick boost energy consumption. This means that energy management is important, 
as it has good quick boost, so you want to quick boost, but you have to be controlling your energy well due to its cost. But overall, this booster has more aerial mobility than the Alula, and it's just a great booster that requires a high level of finesse to play well. And the best thing is, thanks to its high ideal weight, you can run these boosters efficiently across a large range of weight, from 70k to even over 100k. The BST G1 P10 only excels at two things, one of which matters little compared to the stats you can get from boosters. First is it weighs little with the lowest energy load. However, booster is a part that has a very clear and drastic change in your AC for how much it costs. Even if you want to save energy load or energy supply efficiency for energy regeneration, I wouldn't do it with the boosters. The only other selling point of this booster is that it has very low quick boost energy consumption, so you can quick boost repeatedly. Its quick boost reload time is 0.6 seconds, which is a tad bit below average, but honestly, 0.6 seconds is plenty fast enough for what it does. Its quick boost ideal weight has it competing with boosters like the Alula's though. It also has the second lowest quick boost thrust, only beating the mule. As there is simply no way this booster is beating the Alula's for closing distances with quick boosts. This means that the only advantage it has is to spam dodge on cooldown defensively. Therefore, these boosters are only useful for builds below 66k weight that want to continuously dodge to keep the enemy FCS off you, where 0.6 seconds per dodge is a great rhythm and gap in time for you to pull this off. It's a really niche playstyle and requirement, because your speed isn't fast enough to keep fast melee ranged ACs away. This strategy is only better at countering mid or long range builds that rely on their target tracking more heavily. Overall, I don't recommend these boosters, especially because of another booster we will be covering soon. Talking about the P10, the 12345 booster is very similar but designed for heavier setups. In exchange for an even longer quick boost reload time, your dodges are longer and faster. Because of the better quick boost, the 12345 is especially better than the P10 when in the air. While these boosters are serviceable in PvE for giving heavier weight ACs a good quick boost, I don't recommend choosing these boosters, especially for PvP, for ACs under 97k weight, as their overall stats are actually pretty bad, like the P10s. Yes, funny enough, I am only recommending these boosters when used above their ideal weight. Let me explain the reasoning with the next booster. And the primary reason to the downfall of the P10 and the 12345 is because the BST G2 P04 booster exists. It's time to talk about the all rounder boosters. First, let's compare the P10 to the P04, where the biggest loss in stats is your quick boost energy consumption. The higher upward thrust and quick boost thrust definitely more than makes up for the energy consumption and quick boost jet duration. As long as your game plan isn't to spam your quick boost as much as possible, the P04 is better, especially because the quick boost ideal weight of the P04 means that it can accommodate even heavier ACs too. As for the 12345 booster, let's use an AC at a heavier weight of roughly 93k, which is above the P04's ideal weight, but below the 12345's. You will see on the right side, that despite the ideal weight nerf, even at 93k weight, your quick boost reload time is still faster than the 12345's because the ideal weight nerf hasn't kicked in in full force yet. Hit 94k weight and the PO4's reload time is longer. However, I said that I would only consider the 12345 after 97k total weight because only then is the reload time long enough for me to give up a shocking myriad of better stats. The P04 unlike the 12345 just has no big weaknesses. The other all-round booster is the Flugo 21Z, which is the faster but less energy efficient version 
of the P04, designed for lighter weight ACs. You saw how stat dense an all round booster can be in terms of raw stats like the P04. The only thing I have to add about the Flugo is that I would only consider these when your AC is below 80k weight to utilize the faster speed well and to prevent you from going way over the ideal weight. Remember my tip on the weight tiers in the thrust section? I would usually not sit right at 80k weight and go heavier instead, which is why I would just prefer the P04 over the Flugo at that point. Now, I know one of the most common questions is going to be, why would I run an all-rounder booster? I personally find them to be excellent in PvE because they are able to handle all sorts of situations that you can run into throughout a mission. They're indeed harder to utilize in PvP because they don't specialize, so you can't use them to enhance your build strength or cover for a weakness. However, they are still very steady, especially the P04, which has less competition for higher weight ACs. Finally, I have two more boosters that I want to introduce. The first is the Burzo 21D, the booster with the highest assault boost thrust in game. The assault boost energy cost is also not too high, making this booster very good at chasing down enemies even if your build is heavy, as it also has the highest quick boost reload ideal weight. It does have the longest quick boost reload time though, with really poor quick boost thrust and quick boost duration. This is why it is ideal to use these boosters on heavier setups that can tank more to cover the quick boost weakness while reaching high speeds despite being heavy. The Burzel is built for traveling with the assault boots and is very offensively oriented as the best way to utilize the assault boost speed is to use it to chase or kick your enemy. It's very strong in PvP for mid to high weight builds with an annoyingly wide tetrapod kick and deals a bunch of impact damage. And because you can also assault boost in the air, these things can be used to chase down aerial targets as well. One little detail to note about this booster though, is it does indeed have the highest weight and energy cost for boosters. Finally, we have the Kikaku, the second slowest booster only after the Mule. But its gimmick is its supremely high melee thrust. You will definitely want your build to be very melee focused, with melee weapons that can dash with this booster. Combining chargeable weapons with melee cancel can give you extremely fast bursts of speed that can surprise your opponent. Its dashes are not powerful like the Lulas that can close distances quickly, but the energy consumption and low enough reload time allows you to dodge efficiently when on the defensive. Alright, let's do a summary. First, if you haven't taken a look at the stats section that I marked as important, I suggest you to go back and take a look at that carefully. The BST G2 P06 SPD is a booster specialized in speed. It excels at grounded battle and is quite a bit weaker at aerial combat due to its average upward thrust stats combined with very pricey quick boost. The Lula booster is yet another ground based booster thanks to its horrendous upward thrust and upward energy consumption. However, Fast is the only word that can be used to describe these boosters. While it burns energy quickly, it is well worth it for builds up to roughly 72 to 73k weight. Don't run melee weapons that utilize dashes with the gills, but other than that, they have better aerial capabilities versus the Lula, but a weaker quick boost in terms of distance. And because of the weaker quick boost, I think that having the lowest quick boost reload time is actually a waste and can even be detrimental as you waste more energy when spammed in quick succession. Therefore, I suggest going over the ideal weight to somewhere around 74 or 75k weight to give you the ability to spam quick boosts at a more reasonable pace while having a bulkier setup right at the edge of the weight tier. The Gridwalker is a great offensive oriented booster that excels at chasing down targets both grounded and aerial for lightweight builds. Thanks to having the second highest melee thrust, it is also very good with melee setups. 
while you can go over its quick boost ideal weight even on purpose to make the booster better at dodging, having too heavy of a weight does kill the booster's reload time. I don't suggest this booster for builds above 80k weight. The mule is actually not good for tetrapods since upward energy consumption does not include hovering. This booster is best with reverse joints that can cover for its slow ascension speed, turning your AC into a floaty tetrapod-like build. But as it is very slow on all aspects, I don't suggest running this booster outside floaty long-range PvE builds. The NGI-001 is my personal favorite booster, and is great across medium to heavy weight ranges. It is similar to the Alula's for heavier ACs that is skewed to be more defensive and has better aerial capabilities. However, this is one of the most difficult boosters to pilot correctly, as its quick boosts are very expensive, and you should take care to time your quick boosts correctly while managing your energy. The BST G1P10 is used as a quick boost spam booster to continuously disrupt your enemy's FCS. However, this strategy works best against longer range setups and it doesn't have the mobility to escape faster setups that want to chase it down. The 12345 booster is essentially a heavier version of the P10 booster, so they both suffer from similar problems. Furthermore, if you aren't spamming the quick boosts nearly as much, the BST G2 P04 booster or the lighter weight Blue Girl 21Z are balanced boosters that have most stats of the P10 and the 12345 beat. The most notable parts about these two all-round boosters is their lack of a glaring weakness and their ability to adapt to any situation. The Burzil 21D excels at its extremely fast assault boost thrust, which is best used on heavier ACs to make up for their slower speed while also covering for its weak quick boost potential. Thanks to kicks building up a ton of impact, these boosters can be extremely scary, both on the ground and in the air. The Kikaku is a booster where you put all your faith into your melee weapons. You must run this booster with a melee weapon or weapons that utilize the melee dash on boosters. There's just so much to boosters that I think it's very case by case, so I suggest looking at my build videos, including the ones I will be putting out. I try to cover the most important points, so if this video has helped you understand boosters better, do drop me a comment down below. Like and subscribe. If you want to support my work, please consider buying my fantasy novel or donating to my Patreon down below. With a book purchase, you can also request a topic from me, Krite, signing out.